must be very clear to everybody here that these are well-directed, deliberately uh, picked to reverse progress that has been made in this country in over a hundred years. And uh, in that sense, I want just to make uh, one, say one word about protest. I'm too old to protest. <laughs> because if you protest, what you're really saying is, I've lost the battle and I don't like it. Well, obviously, if you lose a battle, you don't like it. We should be here to demand. And what we demand, I mean, is what we're all about, they organise it responsible part way for the meeting, you've probably seen the leaflet, and the People's Charter, uh, which is signed by large numbers of people, uh, has uh, demands for oh, more and better jobs, decent homes for all, protect the public services, fairness and justice, and so on. And the reason I say that is because if you look back over this, so this is not the first battle that we've been involved in. You go right back a couple of hundred years, trade unions were illegal. It was absolutely illegal for anyone to form a trade union or to swear an oath of allegiance to a trade union. And the toll bottle martyrs were sent to Australia as punishment because they had sworn an oath to support each other in the agricultural workers' union. And throughout the whole of this period, there have always been movements, positive movements, like the one we are today, which has laid down what we want and organised to bring it about. And the Charter, I mentioned the Charter, it's not the first Charter because, of course, when my great-grandfather was born in 1832, uh, he was a, a Scot, Scotsman, a working class guy, right? didn't have the vote. When my mother was born in 1897, women didn't have the vote. And therefore, without the vote, you were in a very weak position because you couldn't get rid of the government doing things you didn't like. So the campaign for trade unionism and the campaign for the vote has given us responsibility we have to discharge. Now, forgive me making a personal point, but nearly 68 years ago, I was in living in Birmingham, learning to fly for the RAF at a, a municipal airport called Elmond, which I think still exists. And I was flying Tiger Moths, I couldn't believe my luck, but for two shillings a day, I was having such fun. <laughs> but when I was here, I learned a very, very important lesson about democracy, which I have often spoken about at public meetings, and I think it's appropriate, I might, might refer to it again today. Because what happened when democracy began was people had a new choice as to how they would reach their decision. In the old days, with the market, if you had could afford the medical treatment, you, you bought it. If you couldn't, you didn't get it. If you could afford to go to the university, you went there. If you couldn't, you didn't go there. But when democracy began, people were given a new tool and they could vote for things they couldn't afford personally. And uh, what they did was to vote for public services and uh, when the government was elected, uh, local authority elected, on that program, then the public services were provided. And I've been, I, I, I dug it out from my files today, but I've been making more, giving more lectures about Birmingham, and, uh, democracy in Birmingham, than probably anyone from the city. And it's uh, 1838, they had the first elected council in Birmingham, the Municipal Charter Institutes and Elected Council. And what happened was this. This is, uh, in 1861, the first public library was started. People, what people did was to vote for the public library, even though they couldn't afford to, to go and buy the books themselves. In uh, 18, uh, wait a minute, 1872, the first medical officer of health was appointed. 1874, first municipal hospital for fever cases. 1875, City of Birmingham takes over the supply of gas. 1875, Corporation Street Clearance begins with an improvement scheme. 1875, City Fire Brigade started. 1876, City takes over water supply. 1890, First Municipal Houses. 1898, 
city takes over the supply of electricity. 1904, city commenced operating their own tramways. 1908, uh, care of maternity and child welfare begins. 1916, municipal savings bank started. 1919, beginning of big municipal housing schemes. 1930, city takes over public assistance. 1930, slum clearance began. 1939, municipal airport opened. Now, you cannot have a more vivid example of what people did when they got together. They organized, demanded, and then when the election came, the people voted for the services they need, and these are the very services the government are trying to slash. Because don't make any mistake about it, this is a, a politically motivated cut program. It's not that we have no choice. I mean, if you were ask me how I'd save money, I'd give you a few suggestions. I'd give up spending £70 billion pounds on nuclear weapons. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't go ahead with the war in Afghanistan. It costs £5 billion a year. And uh, if you have a debt, one way of doing it is to uh, have a higher taxation to pay for it. And I looked up the other day, just for interest, what the level of taxation was when Winston Churchill was Prime Minister in the coalition government in 1945. When Churchill was Prime Minister, the highest rate of tax was 95%. Why? Because we needed the money for the war and it was thought everyone should share the burden. That was a totally different attitude towards uh, uh, dealing with the economy. You know, this is a, an attempt to wipe out the gains that are struggled for by working people over 200 years, and we won't let it happen. And then well, what we're engaged in is a campaign, and every one of us who come here have taken responsibility for coming, to use these arguments, uh, in talking to your comrades and colleagues, plan events, have meetings which are educational, because after all, all these big demonstrations explain things to people in a way that's different from what they read about in newspapers, and gradually build up such a movement that in the end, the government will not be able to carry on with it. And I do think this is a, a really, really tough battle. I go around for my sins all the time doing meetings. I, I was in Downing Street a couple of nights ago and uh, in Tower Hamlets uh, just uh, a week or two ago and listening to people in these meetings describing what is happening in the streets they live in. Uh, there's a doctor I uh, heard describing what this, uh, these cuts are going to do, uh, privatising the National Health Service because in effect uh, instead of the health service providing all the provisions people need, doctors will be invited to uh, get the services provided and they will go to private suppliers who will offer to do the job uh, more economically and then gradually the health service will be allowed to die on the side and then teachers talking about <coughs> what this is doing to education, what it's doing to people who want to go to university where fees are out of them, just off the range of possibility, £10,000 a year fees, who could afford to pay those fees? And there was an old age pensioner who came to one of the meetings and he said, if they take away the bus pass, he said, I'm going to get on buses and I'm not going to pay. <laughs> taking up the cause of our ancestors to build a fairer and better society in circumstances where so many people are going to be hit by what is happening that we will win support for these arguments. And then um, down the street the other day, uh, we had all these speakers about it all, and somebody said, what about France? And somebody began shouting, vive la France, long live France, because they felt the French had given an example of what was done. And that's what we've got to get the trade unions to take up. We've got to persuade the Parliamentary Labour Party to support local authorities, people working on uh, <coughs> like Birmingham and so on, to take it up and say, no, we will not accept. And we want certain things and lay down what we want and campaign for that. So that's the uh, best I can offer to you today is a positive approach, I hope not seeing it as a disaster, but a challenge. Mm -hmm. A challenge which our people in this country have taken on many times in the past mm -hmm. and which
which I think if we take on now, we have a very, very good chance of winning. So I wish you all success and the fact that it's happening in the Birmingham City Council uh, is an example of uh, what can be built up by popular demand, as you've done it here, and we mustn't allow it to be defeated.